シャーラー Hello there and welcome to another Doctor Who DVD review in today's Doctor Who DVD review I'll be looking at this Sharder, the, the steelbook version, yes, um, which has rec fairly recently been released um, back in December and it is obviously of the lost classic fourth Doctor adventure, um, what was originally going to close um, uh, season 17 off but didn't happen because of industrial action. Um, the reason why I go lost classic is because Sharder has had so many versions, we've had the VHS, the novelization, the Paul McGann version. Uh, you know, Shard has been done to death, so it's hardly a lost adventure when there are so many versions of Shard out there. So we'll be answering the question, can we finally close the book on Shard? Is this the definitive version of Shard? So yeah, without further ado, let's So taking a look question. how this still book is presented, we have the fourth Doctor Very nice little uh, action uh, shot there in sort of animated form. We've got the uh, main sort of culprit of the story, the book of Shard. Uh, we've got Skagra there in this sort of shadows there, we've got Skagra's little ball um, with shooting off sort of energy and if you get it in the light it looks like it is uh, shooting off there very nice, it's quite nice how the light reflects it. Um, we've got K9 there, this sort of spaceship background, Doctor Who Sharda, BBC PG. The side of the DVD as you can see the energy continues on the spine there, saying what it is. Then the blurb of Sharda and saying what's on each disc there, so do feel free to pause if you want to know more about Sharda and what's on each disc and then we have a nice little animated shot of the infamous uh, boat scene or well, punting scene then some sort of technical stuff there really. So removing the slipcase I have to say this is the first still book where the still book um, slipcase doesn't match up um, as you can see it doesn't line up with K9 and making look K9 look rather dodgy so if we just move around to the back we have Romana there with some prison convicts from Shard which is very nice so we move that to the side and we have this, the production notes, basically another animated shot there um, done by the wonderful Clayton Hickman. This was originally going to be sort of the DVD art motif. So if we just look through, got some production notes, how they filmed it, why it didn't happen, all that kind of stuff. The animating process and the recording there of the model shot and etc. And more about the special features there. So yeah, and some more animated stuff there on the special features. So yeah, there we go. And the disc off the release, so there's disc one, disc two, and disc three and behind that we have a lovely sort of Douglas Adams inspired uh, space uh, background which is rather nice. So before I actually review the 2017 edition of Sharda, I think it's quite important to do my initial reaction to when I first experienced the story because when I um, got Power of the Daleks, you know, I listened to the soundtrack, gave the story a nine out of 10. Then the DVD release came out with the animation, the story dropped to a seven out of 10. It just, yeah, if the animation isn't there, when the story's going to flop because that's the main way you're portraying the story through the animation so yeah so my initial rating for Sharda back in 2013 was a 9 out of 10 I absolutely loved it we had the announcement that Sharda was being animated and most Doctor Who fans sighed because we've already got Sharda on the DVD shelf look there is Sharda already on the DVD shelf why and fans were like why aren't we getting these missing episodes so me being the curious fan as I am, and I absolutely love Sharda, um, I wanted to get it. I wanted to experience this to see if this was the final chapter for Sharda. Can we finally say that Sharda has been done? So what are my opening thoughts on the 2017 edition of Sharda? Well, I absolutely love it. I feel like this is a true love letter to the show. From the first moment you press play, you're introduced to a BBC um, ident with an announcer saying a little later than expected which is a nice little detail and a nice nod to the fans because we know that Sharda was delayed. Now this is one hell of a step up from Power of the Daleks and I feel like Power of the Daleks was very much a learning curve for the animation team and they have improved with uh, Sharda whether it's because they had less to do and they were less restricted by the soundtrack as Power of the Daleks did come across rather clunky as you could hear things moving which didn't match what was going on the screen and that's probably down to Sharda having this newly recorded audio now my main concern with Sharda was it being jarring, with it cutting from live action to animation and I certainly was proven wrong as all the elements blend together um, whether it be animation, the new music score, the model work, the existing footage they all complement each other with no element um, outshining the rest though I do have a few minor niggles of that which I will cover in the negative section but the first transition to animation just works incredibly well 
The new music score done by Mark Ayers is brilliant. It certainly fits for 70s filtering and almost tricks you thinking, are they using the City of Death score? And also the theme music, it's different. Um, instead of using the traditional 1970s theme tune, we get the unused theme from 2004 slash 2005, the Delia Derbyshire theme. Now the story itself is just wonderful. It's full of Douglas Adams sci-fi humour and wit. Now the plot is pretty simple, which is not a bad thing as this story proves the point. Simple but effective as this story is centred around a book. But the story does have this broad scope from Cambridge to the prison planet and now the Time Lords. Now if you love the Time Lords, then Sharda is certainly going to float your boat as this story really explores the mythos and the lore of the Time Lords. Now I really love the idea of the Time Lords having this hidden prison planet. It just fits the Time Lords incredibly well, giving the story a wonderful scale. The way the story is structured is great as it may come across as a slow burner for the first 20 minutes but you just forget about that because you're just so entertained and so wrapped up with the shenanigans that are going on on the screen. But the story slowly reveals itself bit by bit causing some fantastic twists and turns throughout as the story does have a great mystery behind it. You know, um, such as what is this strangely dressed fellow doing with this fear? What is so dangerous about the book? And what secret is Professor Cronotis hiding? And it brings all these elements together and it wraps them up in a tidy little the Location boat. footage I think is beautiful which I feel really aids this adventure as Sharda is presented as this movie so the location footage just really helps give it that cinematic quality and it just looks absolutely stunning on Blu-ray. Now we also do have a few flashbacks to some previous fourth Doctor We adventures. also have some fantastic action sequences within this story which are predominantly mostly in the second half of the story which is done in animation so it works a lot more better because it's a lot more technical stuff with the action stuff really but um, in the first half we do have the classic bike scene with the fourth doctor being chased by the sphere and I have to talk about the end scene for this release it is truly the cherry on top of the cake as it just tops off this grand adventure nicely and it's just a real highlight for the adventure it's one of the standout moments of the story and it will just make any fan squeal with delight. It's a shame that uh, the newspapers leaked this information because I think that would have been a real lovely surprise. If you don't know the surprise, I'm not going to ruin it, but if, if you haven't seen it and you don't know what it is, then you're in for a lovely treat when you do see the 2017 edition of Sharda. Moving on to characters now, we have the Doctor, played by Tom Baker. Now, Tom is absolutely on fire. You know, you can really tell that he's giving it his all, whether it be in the live action or the animation, as this story, I feel, shows him off at his finest. Now, if this was completed uh, back then, I feel like this would have been the last time the fourth Doctor could clown around, because season 18 is when the fourth Doctor um, became a lot more sombre and more mellow. So I feel like this story really explores the more comedic side of his Doctor, um, especially when he's playing dead with the ship. And he just gets some fantastic one-liners, but despite his humorous nature within this story, you can tell that he has this underlying worry and concern, and he realises how deadly this situation really is. Romana! Played by Lala Ward. A fantastic performance as we see a little bit of a flirty side to her, especially in the punting scene, which I think really shows um, the dynamic between the Romana 2 and the 4th Doctor. And you can see a bit of romances in the air between the 4th, well, Tom Baker and Lala Ward. Um, but Romana herself, um, she's very logical, very scientific, you know, very concerned by the situation. And we get to see her character a bit more fleshed out with her, with us learning more about her academy days and her childhood, which is a very nice little uh, nod with the time tots thing, really. Scabra played by Christopher Neem. What a menacing performance he gives. It's just really intimidating, and I just love the mystery around his character. You know, he's very demanding as a character, with the way he stands there and you know summons this person to ask where is Professor Kronotis and I just love that he's so self-assured that he won't fail and giving him that sort of arrogant feel to him and also you know who would think that this fear could be so deadly um, but the scenes between him and the Doctor are just an absolute treat especially on the spaceship they're just absolutely wonderful but I will say this I'm not mad about his tailor. Chris Parsons played by Daniel Hill very much the catalyst of this story and he very much plays the companion role within this story with the first half of the story he's very much the companion to Romana and the second half he's very much the companion to the Doctor. Now he's very curious about the book and you can tell um, that he's a person of learning and just gives a wonderful performance and especially on the animated scenes you know he's just his voice has an age he just gives a very timeless performance within this it's just an absolutely wonderful performance and I love Chris Parsons I think he's a great character and just works so well off um, the Doctor and Romana. Professor Cronotis played by Dennis Kerry 
just probably my favourite supporting character within this. I just think he's absolutely lovely. He's such a, a warm character, very much a doddery, bumbling character and always offering tea. Just a really charming character with a very interesting twist. I just think he's a wonderful character, brilliantly portrayed by Dennis. So Karen. moving on to negatives. Now I do have a few little nitpicks of Sharda. Um, so now despite Sharda being this big epic story, I will say that the movie format didn't work for me. I feel like it needed to be split into two halves as I found the middle of the story it did lose it. Maybe that's just me because I can't sit down and binge watch a whole classic story. To me that just feels wrong because Classic U isn't designed to be binge watched. Um, really I feel like when the Doctor gets attacked on the ship by the Sphere, once he finishes that scene, uh, finishes reading the book, I think that's when part one should have ended for this adventure. And especially as the story progresses in the latter half of the story, you can tell where the cliffhanger would have been. And I think that there should have been an option to have this story in two halves, and maybe six to make it feel a lot more traditional, um, but still have the movie option if you just want to watch the thing all the way through. Um, also, the bike scene. This is, these are a lot more, these are the minor niggles really. That was my main fault with Sharda, um, the sort of it being in one big movie. Now the minor niggle I have is the chasing on the bike. The music I feel really didn't fit the scene, and also where we cut from, where we cut to live action canine fighting a Krog, just didn't match up. Now those two are the minor nitpicks, whereas I feel like the movie um, format for me just didn't work. I feel like it just made the story lose something for me. So really. overall, what do I think of the 2017 edition of Sharda? Well, I can safely say this is the definitive version of Sharda. We can close the book. We can close the case of Sharda. It is finally here. We finally got a, the best representation we are going to get on Sharda. Um, I feel like the story itself just feels incredibly warm and charming. It is just brilliant, full of the humour and the wit of Douglas Adams alongside Tom Baker at his finest. This story is just an absolute hoot to watch. The threat within the story is absolutely wonderful. I think Skagra is a really underrated villain. I think he's absolutely superb. Um, and even the little uh, sphere within the story does get a sense of danger. It may look a bit comical at times, but you do get a bit of a fear factor from it. Um, like I said, this just is a real love letter to the fans and just to the show itself because there are hidden Easter eggs scattered throughout the story. And the story is just brilliant. I mean, I highly recommend you pick this up. If you're unsure about picking this story up, I honestly pick it up. It is just one of the best releases um, best animated releases we've ever had done. Um, just look how um, Planet 55 improved from the Reign of Terror to the Moon Base. Um, it just shows that over time the animation's got get gonna get better and better and this is definitely a step in the right direction for Doc 2 animated releases. Um, the transitions, they just flow rather fluid um, and they don't mess with the narrative which is fantastic. Um, I just love it. I mean, it, it just made me fall in love with Sharda again. It just, Sharda, there's something timeless about it. And it's just a really beautiful story. And I just love the humour and the wit within it. So overall, what am I going to give Sharda the 2017 edition? Well, I'm going to give Sharda 9 Jelly Babies out of 10. The rating has stayed the same. Um, I'm just so thankful that the rating has stayed the same because Sharda is just a beautiful story. And I absolutely love it. Full of great twists and turns throughout it. And I highly recommend you check it out. If you were unsure about Sharda being animated and you just weren't sure whether to get it, definitely consider picking it up because it's just a real great homage to that era with all the new elements complementing each other. It is just superb. I absolutely adore it. So that's the main review done. Let's talk about the little special features on the other discs. So moving on to the special features of the Steelbook. Now, disc one is just audio, audio commentary and Sharda itself. Disc two is when the actual special features and bonus stuff happens. Um, you have three extras what have been included on the Legacy Collection version of Sharda, what was um, done back in 2013. So we've got Taken Out of Time, Now and Then, and Strike Strike. Um, so Taken Out of Time is why Sharda never happened. Now and then it's just revisiting the locations used throughout Sharda. Studio Sessions, I think, is on the Legacy Collection version um, of Sharda. Now these are the newer elements. So we have the Dialogue Sessions. Um, so they were recorded back in June last year. Um, and that's probably my favourite feature on that disc, what is new. Um, because you see Tom Baker for 15 minutes just having a good old laugh and a giggle. It's fantastic. We have um, Studio Shooting, so behind the scenes of the last um, scene filmed within Sharda, which is fantastic. And we have the model filming. 
Um, we also have uh, deleted scenes, um, which is, they're not animated, it's just the raw audio um, filmed. We have the title film sequence, um, which is basically the Tom Baker intro, which I think was included back on Robot. Um, we then we have sort of um, a green screen feature, which is live action reference footage, where we see um, Daniel Hill and Barnaby Edwards and another person filling in for Tom Baker, sort of just to give the animations reference of movement, that kind of thing. And we have the uh, photo gallery from 1979 and 2017. Uh, now, disc free um, is quite interesting and it's quite nice because as the Paul McGann webcast from 2003, now it was included on the original Sharda DVD um, contained on the Legacy Collection, uh, but you can actually watch this on, on the DVD. You don't have to use your laptop because it was a ROM feature. Um, I'm not sure if it is um, a ROM feature on the DVD, but I believe that this um, is only on the Blu-ray um, still, is only on the Blu-ray really. Um, I'm not sure if it's just a ROM feature on the DVD, um, so I don't know. And we also have, um, what else do we have? We have the VHS um, version of Sharda um, as well, which is rather nice because I, that's a Sharda I fell in love with. Um, so those are the special features which are all fantastic. I so what them. are my concluding thoughts on the 2017 edition of Sharda, the still book? Well, I think that it is a beautiful release. And it's so nice to say that we can close the book on Sharda because this is the definitive version. The story itself, like I said, is just beautiful and it's just warm and charming and all the elements just complement each other. Nothing is trying to outshine and outdo the rest. It's just beautiful. Um, the animation has improved um, a lot because there's a lot more action within it. Whether that's to do because Sharda has completely new audio, especially on the missing scenes. Um, the negatives I have with the movie feature doesn't really work within the story um, and it should have like uh, an option to split it into two halves but I think that's just me being fussy because I don't like binge watching Classico just the way I am. Um, the sort of chasing the bike, the music didn't fit and the cut from uh, K9 and the crowd to live action just didn't really work for me and also the prison um, convicts on the actual Sharda. Now, the whole thing with that is, was done on a budget reason, um, but they were going to reuse old monster costumes like the Zygon, the Ice Warrior, the Daleks. Um, I think that would have been really nice just to include it. Instead, we've got um, just generic aliens, and there's Tom Baker, I think, as uh, Sinbad um, as well, so that's a nice little reference, but I think it would have been just a nice little nod uh, to um, the production if they had some of the old monsters as well, just to make it feel a bit more quirky um, to make it feel more of the time um, but that's just an, again another minor niggle but the animation's fine the music's brilliant and it's just a real great release the special features are a nice addition and if you were to get this um, and you've got Sharda already on the DVD shelf from the Legacy Collection then definitely consider getting the still book because technically you're not really filling a space anymore um, you're just getting it just to see this new version of Sharda um, but if you haven't got Sharda already then certainly get the DVD if you want to fill that space on your shelf. Um, but overall, I would definitely recommend the Steelbook because it is, like I said, free discs um, and obviously getting to see the Paul McGann version on your TV without using your laptop is just wonderful. Um, so I highly recommend the 2017 edition of Shard. The story is wonderful and the special features are great. So yeah, thank you very much for watching this review. I hope you have enjoyed it and I'll see you on my next video, whatever that will be. So thank you very much and... Bye-bye.